So you see there's a lot of the scrap metal from the body. We've got a scrap exhaust. We'll put some new hoses on there. The bumper's going to go back on, but this was all junk right here. Now all the parts are going back on. We're just wire wheeling all the brackets and stuff. And we got to do the floor and the shifters. Just painting it black just so it'll live another 20 years of rust and we can extend its life. You see this has been done already and our next project will be fixing up that course of work. We're just going to fix up a lot of stuff that the previous owner probably just got the job done but we can clean it up, get all these metals straightened out. So butchered. 90 degree corners that should be rolled. You get cut on that stuff. And they had this goopy tar. We gotta clean this all under here and prime and paint it. Just straightening it out. Everything was jagged. When you slip the boot on and stuff, it'll be a lot easier. We gotta get some kind of sealer around here. But now I gotta use lacquer thinner and get this all off, and prime and paint it. We gotta reuse this manifold, at least temporarily, because the new one's on back order. Okay, now for the moment of truth, you can see this is a core support that supposedly is supposed to save us a bunch of time instead of wasting and working on our rusty piece. Hopefully this turns out to be a good piece. It's dirty, but... Solid. Ours is all rusted in here. There's nothing. So those are strong. It's good. We're getting ready to put a clutch on this engine. We want to clean all this off so it's running on there perfectly true. We had to clean all this off of here so the bell housing sits on there true. And we're going to put a dial indicator on it to see how flat the bell housing is and how centered the bell housing is. Well, a long time ago, my buddy had a Jeep Renegade with a 304. It was brand new, it was under warranty, and he went through like three clutches, and they thought he was abusing it. And he goes, no, I'm driving it normal. And finally, a mechanic says, let me check something. So they took it apart, and when they ended up putting a dial indicator on there, and they were running on the inside of the Bell housing, it was ten thousands off to one side. They had to get these dowel pins that moved it over so that the clutch would be in the center and the shaft would be running true and then he didn't go through clutches anymore. So everything's been cleaned off. Now, this is all the time consuming stuff that people don't realize when they're paying somebody to work on their car and hopefully they don't cut the corners. But all these threads have to be cleaned out so that when you do a decent torque, you're getting the right reading. And we're just getting the crud out of them. Was that a 7 16th 20 thread? Yeah. That's what? the thing. A lot of people don't have the taps. And usually all the fasteners are fine thread. There's more um, contact surface. There's more threads per inch so it's got more holding power. In the past when people put these on they usually use like Loctite and stuff so they won't come off and that's what you're cleaning out is just it's like a plastic. It's a liquid that when it doesn't get air then all of a sudden it hardens up and it keeps the thing from backing out. It's a nice design it's a needle bearing and this supports the shaft of the transmission and they're hard to get out. So we're going to pack this full of grease and we're going to pound on here and hopefully it'll hydraulically push this race out until we can grab it with a vice grips or whatever and try to wiggle it out. Other people say they did it. I've never done it. All right, we're gonna see when I worked on a Chevy, they had a bronze bushing. And to get it out, I didn't know about hydraulically pushing it out. We had to take a die grinder and cut it in half and then 
pry it from the sides and get it out, and then the new one pushes in easy. But how do you get be, you know behind? Sometimes there's a gap behind there, and they got a tool that goes out, and then you use a slide hammer and pull it out. When you're a kid, you don't have all those tools. Well, you can feel it. It's, it works. I got a suction on it. Hey, this almost reminds me of something. <laughs> I think we only have to put a little bit more in there, and it'll work. Came right out. Cool. <laughs> I think I gotta pack some more in there. That's fantastic. Cool. Now I gotta dig all that grease out and we're gonna stick the new one in. So this is already pre lubed from the factory. And it really feels nice. The other one I thought was alright, but you can tell a, de a definite difference between the brand new one. I was just trying to knock, you know, there's a high spot, you can feel it, getting that off. Then I'll use the 180. But somehow that got hit. Trying to get the outside edge, seems like a little ridge. Just trying to check and see if there's any ridges. Around the holes. I'm just using it. It's basically that little edge. Well, I cleaned off some crap. I'll just get a rag, wipe it. The cleaner you can get everything, the better your assembly will be. Nobody wants to have to do anything a second time. Now, well, the other side, it was machined, but it was been sitting around so long. We already got fuzzy rust. Sometimes you'll have a machine that has a bunch of fly cutting, you know, it's a spinner, and you'll see that on the surface of the head or whatever where the cutters are coming by, and you'll have these half art. This, I think they call it Blanchard ground. But there's tables that just have lapping tables and you put a part on it, and these things all turn in their own circles. You can lay something on it, lays it perfectly flat. The thing sat around and got rusty. You're probably thinking we're really weird about this. And you put it out there and it's not going to get used. The same thing will happen. You let the clutch out one time and uh, it'll be, you know, all the rust will be worn off. But we're getting it just perfect so when we start it up, the brakes will, I mean, the clutch will be smooth, hopefully. It was chattering before and we didn't like that. If you drive it as infrequently as we do, it's going to be rusty every time we let it sit. But do a couple burnouts and it'll be nice and shiny again. We got an air people kit to put this flywheel back on. Instruction said make sure there's a chamfer here. Well, there was none, so we just put this on the drill press, put a real mild chamfer on it. We got this mid plate back on it. Wire wheeled it to try to keep everything as accurate as possible. We're going to use some Loctite under the threads and then the ultra lubricant under the heads of the bolts. So I'm just cleaning this crap up so it doesn't wing off and get into the clutch and pressure plates later on. But all these are torqued down now and now we're going to put the bell housing on and check it for con concentricity. For being so cheap and not re-ringing it or no, not putting new bearings in it that we're going overboard putting ARP bolts on the flywheel. If you ever heard the story of how Don Garlitz had a flywheel shatter, of course these guys are running nitro burning, you know, they were front engine dragsters at the time. When this thing lets go, Let's say if you did put cheapy bolts in here and the flywheel would come unglued, you know, let's say if he was trying to get out of a, a dump truck would be trying to get out of a nasty situation and we're loaded down and you're putting a lot of strain to it and this thing 
lets go and the flywheel comes through the bell housing, comes through the sheet metal floor pan and cuts your feet off, you would have wished that you bought these ARP bolts. So we believe in putting money into something where it's needed. You know, this is for safety's sake. We got the surface cleaned up pretty good here. We're checking this bell housing for parallelism here. And I'm not even going to show this gauge. We are definitely out. I guess you could have the bell housing machined or something. I don't know. We're just going to run it. Here we're checking for concentricity. All right, that's good. It's definitely out that way too. I think our setup is not the best with that mag base being in there. I think I'm just gonna run it and see what happens. I'm just cleaning the surface, getting any wax or oil. Doesn't look like they had any wax or oil on it. It's starting to get a little fuzzy rust on it. Flywheel side. We're putting some Loctite in all these pressure plate bolts. That's all torqued on. Tightening it down, you know, and there was a gap, and as you're as you're tightening the bolts down, you're putting pressure on the clutch disc. That's what grabs your car. And then when you have the uh, pivot fork with the throwout bearing that rides on here, then you're going to de be depressing that. And then it really lets the clutch spin in there. We're greasing up where this ball rides. It's in here too. Oh, it's got to go on there. Pivot fork. It goes on that ball. And as you're pressing the pedal in, this spins. That's why a lot of times when somebody has a stick shift car, it's going <sighs> making a noise. You put the clutch in, the noise goes away. That's the throwout bearing noise. That's when this thing starts getting sloppy. A real pain in the ass to change these out. Another reason why everybody went to automatic. <laughs> but some guys like stick shift and shifting gears. See, it can pivot like this. And when we put this in there and you adjust your clutch, you have to have a gap between the pressure plate and the clutch disc so that you know you're disengaged. We're going to lift this engine and bell housing up to the level of this transmission and see if we can slip this stuff together. Are you sent center and stuff? Oh. Uh, Push the table forward. we got to get this in that pilot hole. I got a lot of force on it. Is the engine needing to go up? I don't know. Is this it looks kind of pearl, isn't it? Putting a stick shift transmission in is a lot harder than automatic. And this thing weighs a ton. And uh, now putting the motor in, this is going to be like heavy on one end. But we got the whole front end off, and tomorrow we'll slide it in, then get it started, and we'll bring it in. We can work indoors. Here's our new tank and epoxy primer. I'm going to scuff it and spray bomb it in some semi-gloss black. Just try to give it another level of protection. Probably about 40 degrees out here right now. I believe the winter solstice is at December 21st this year. Spray bomb on the rest of the miscellaneous pieces too. 